Welcome to the Comparator Series. Ever look at application notes for circuits and read the words, let R1 equal 1K or let R1 equal 1 mega ohm? That practice can get you in trouble. It comes up often with hysteresis design on a comparator. There's usually a desire to minimize the power consumption of any circuit and use large resistors, but sometimes the arbitrary selection of resistor values can be too high. Here, I will lay out a more structured way to design comparator circuits with hysteresis. Let's begin with a quick review of comparators. Here's the most basic non-inverting comparator circuit. The input is analog and the output is digital. The input is connected to the non-inverting input of the comparator and the DC reference signal is connected to the inverting input. Let's say the reference voltage is about midway between VCC and ground. Here's the input versus the output. When the input signal is higher than the reference, the output of the comparator goes high. The inverting configuration is the opposite. The reference goes into the non-inverting input and the input signal goes to the inverting input. Here's the input versus the output. When the input signal is higher than the reference, the output of the comparator goes low. You can think of the comparator as a 1-bit A to D converter. If the input signal is noisy, this causes a problem with the comparator. Here's the reference input in green. As the noisy input signal voltage exceeds the reference voltage, the output follows the noise and causes what I call chatter. Some call it oscillation, but the term oscillation usually refers to an unstable system. In this case, the comparator is doing its job. Notice that every time the signal goes above the reference, the output goes low. This can be alleviated. Here's the noise signal again. When the output goes low, positive feedback lowers the reference threshold below the noise level and a solid clean output is achieved. This dual threshold action is called hysteresis. It's also called a Schmidt trigger. In electronics, a Schmidt trigger is a comparator circuit with hysteresis implemented by applying positive feedback to the non-inverting input of a comparator or differential amplifier. It is an active circuit which converts an analog input signal to a digital output signal. The circuit is called a trigger because the output remains its value until the input changes sufficiently to trigger a change. Otto Schmidt was an American inventor, engineer, and biophysicist known for his scientific contributions to biophysics and for establishing the field of biomedical engineering. In addition to the Schmidt trigger, he designed the differential amplifier and the chopper stabilized amplifier. One thing to mention right up front is that many comparators have an open collector output that requires a pull-up resistor. That accomplishes two things. One, the pull-up resistor can be connected to the logic circuitry voltage supply so the output is compatible with that logic family. Second, it allows for multiple comparator outputs to be connected together to form a wired OR logic system. If any one comparator goes low, a logic zero is asserted. Here is the general circuit for an inverting comparator. RP is the pull-up resistor, and RL is the load, which is often a digital input to some logic system. R1 and R2 form a voltage divider to make the reference threshold voltage VT. To add hysteresis, the resistor RH is connected from the output to the non-inverting input, providing positive feedback. When the input signal is increased beyond the reference voltage, the output sinks to the low state or ground. This connects the right side of RH to ground and lowers the reference threshold. If designed correctly, this second reference state will be below the noise and will result in a clean output. This is how hysteresis works. In most cases, the circuit analysis for this function will be made with some assumptions. One is that the pull-up resistor is much less than the load resistor. It also assumes the pull-up resistor is much less than the hysteresis resistor. 
The high output, or logic 1, is assumed to be VCC, and the logic low, or 0, is ground, or 0 volts. This takes RP and RL out of the analysis. One advantage of the inverting configuration is that it has a high input impedance, with the input signal going directly into the inverting input. Let's look at the basic analysis. When the output is low, RH is connected to ground. When the output is high, RH is connected to VCC. I'm about to show you what I believe is to be the simplest approach for designing hysteresis for an inverting comparator, of which I do not recommend. Here's a case where the output is low and the low threshold is 2.3 volts. When the output goes high, the threshold voltage is 2.7 volts. These simple formulas can be used to calculate the resistor values. The ratio of RH to R1 is 5.75, and the ratio of R2 to R1 is 1. So let R1 equal 100K, and that would make R2 also be 100K. The hysteresis resistor is 5.75 times R1 and comes out to 575K. While it's a very simple approach, these arbitrary resistor selections can be problematic. When I see an application note that reads, let RH equal 1 mega ohm, that makes my head explode. RH must not only push the voltage divider around, but there is some amount of input bias current into the comparator input. If RH is high resistance, it may not carry enough current to overcome the input bias current enough to be accurate. The way to overcome this is to select the hysteresis resistor first based on input bias current. This can be done by making the current through RH be many times higher than the input bias current to reduce errors. Comparators have a crazy range of input bias current specs ranging from picoamps to 400 nanoamps on a LM139 at full temperature range. That's an 8000x range in just these four comparators. Since the pull-up resistor is in series with RH, it needs to be selected and made much smaller than RH at the first as well. Before we can consider the current in RH, we must recognize there will be two different voltages across RH depending on the output state of the comparator. When the output sinks to ground, the threshold voltage VL is at its lowest state. When the output opens, RH is pulled up by the pull-up resistor and the threshold voltage VH is now at its highest state. If we were to design current in RH relative to the maximum voltage across it, when in the other state, the voltage across RH would be lower, the current would be lower as well. We must establish which is the lower voltage across RH. When the output is low, the voltage across RH is VL. If the output is high, the voltage across RH is VCC minus VH. That's of course considering the drop across the pull-up is negligible. So we need to run the numbers and select the minimum. Let's say for an example that we have a VCC of 5 volts, a VL of 1 volt, and a VH of 2 volts. 1 volt is less than 5 minus 2 volts, so VL is less than VCC minus VH, and we can use VL for the voltage. We will calculate the resistance of RH based on input bias current times a scale factor. I choose to set the scale factor to be 100 with the current in RH being 100 times greater than the input bias current, the error is negligible. With an input bias current of 50 nanoamps, RH comes out to 200K. Note that's much smaller than 1 meg. Let's look at the opposite condition. A VCC of 15 volts, VL is 12 volts, and VH is 13 volts. 15 minus 13 is less than the VL at 12 volts. Using the voltage of VCC minus VH yields 400K, again much smaller than 1 meg. This approach is applicable when the input bias current of the comparator is in the large range. Look at the TVL3202 
micropower comparator. Its input bias current is 0.05 nanoamps. That yields an RH at 400 megaohms. That's impractical and slow, even with the minimum of parasitic board capacitances. In this case, just increase the scale factor until it yields a reasonable value. Let's roll through the circuit analysis for the inverting configuration. When the output is high, RH is connected to VCC, so VH is the voltage divider with the parallel combination of RH and R1 with VH across R2. Eliminate the fraction by multiplying by R1 plus RH, then distribute and arrange. When the output is low, RH is connected to ground, so VL is the voltage divider with R1 and the parallel combination of RH and R2. Eliminate the fraction by multiplying by R2 plus RH, then distribute. The total hysteresis, delta VT, is VH minus VL. It's nice that they have the same denominator already. Distribute the numerator and cancel terms. Notice that the equation for delta VT and VL are exactly the same, except for RH and R1. So dividing delta VT by VL gives us the ratio of R1 to RH, then rearranging to solve for R1. Now let's work towards solving R2. Recall the equation for VH. We can use that to solve for R2. Eliminate the second of currents of R2 by multiplying top and bottom by 1 over R2, then rearrange to solve for R2. Here's the quick and easy design procedure for the inverting comparator with hysteresis. Here are the given parameters which have a high threshold of 2.7 volts and a low threshold of 2.3 volts. First, we determine the state that has the minimum voltage across RH. Since the thresholds are symmetrical, VCC minus VH is equal to VL, so use 2.3 volts. Using the scale factor of 100 times the input bias current, we get RH is 230K. Delta VT is 0.4 volts. That gives us 40K for R1. And with no surprise, due to the symmetry, R2 is also 40K. Now let's do the analysis for the non-inverting comparator with hysteresis. One disadvantage of this configuration is that the input impedance is low. If you are working with a sensor of some kind, you would probably want to use the inverting configuration to have a high input impedance. Usually, the logic device receiving the digital output of the comparator can be configured to accept either logic state. When Vout is low, RH is connected to ground. Using the V plus equals V minus abstraction, we can write the voltage divider equation for V ref using RH and R1, then rearrange to solve for VH. When Vout is high, RH is connected to VCC. The voltage divider equation will have an input of VCC minus VL, with VL added to it. Now we proceed with solving for VL. Distribute R1. The minus VL R1 terms cancel, and then factor V ref. And finally, we get the solution for VL. As in the inverting example, we had to determine the state when the voltage across RH is minimum. We will do the same here. When the output is low, the voltage across RH is V ref. When the output is high, the voltage across RH is VCC minus V ref. Delta VN is VH minus VL. These terms cancel, and we have VCC R1 over RH, then rearrange to solve for R1. We will use the equation for VH to solve for VREF. Multiply 1 over RH to eliminate the second occurrence of RH, and we have VREF equals VH over R1 over RH plus 1. Here comes the design procedure for the non-inverting comparator 
with hysteresis. Here are the parameters. The thresholds are 1.5 volts and 2 volts. As in the previous example, we must determine the minimum voltage across RH, but we can't do that now because we don't know what VREF is. It appears at first like we are stuck because we would need R1 and RH to calculate VREF. Turns out we only need the ratio of R1 to RH. Delta VN is 2 volts minus 1.5 volts, which is 0.5 volts. Rearrange the equation for R1 to solve for the ratio of R1 to RH. That ratio comes out as 0.1. Now we know VH and the ratio of R1 and RH, so we can solve for VREF as 1.818 volts. The minimum voltage across RH is the VREF at 1.818 volts. Then calculate RH using the scaling factor of 100 on the input bias current of 100 nanoamps. That comes out to 182K. The equation for R1 yields 18.2K. Let's summarize. Resultant equations for comparator design with hysteresis using the hysteresis resistor as the first selection are very simple. The non-inverting configuration suffers from low input impedance. The voltage thresholds need to be evaluated around the device common mode input range. This methodology restricts the pull-up resistor to be connected to VCC and the reference divider connected to VCC. It also assumes the low output state is zero volts. In an upcoming video, we will address these as separate variables. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.